Bună dimineața! Good morning! Uh, welcome to this workshop, Advanced Technologies for Non-Destructive Examinations, that is organized by the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca <coughs> Faculty of Materials and Environmental Engineering, Department of Material Science and Engineering, and Total Control, uh, whom we are thanking a lot for all the assistance and all the help for starting such an important activity that is in hybrid format. It means that what we are talking here can be seen on the web page of our um, faculty directly uh, online. I will start for those of you who are new to Cluj and to our university with a warm welcome. Cluj, which is, we would say, a, a brand in what university community is in. Cluj is a university city with around 100,000 students, six state universities, and rich cultural heritage, as it used to be a Roman municipium more than 2,000 years ago, and it developed for quite a while uh, in, in this sense. I would like to thank very much the organizers, Marius Boda, from our group, and Christian Sanchulescu and Mugurel Prapciu from Total Control. They did a lot to join us here and to, to make these things possible. It is interesting that at the moment we decided to have this workshop today, uh, we didn't know that it will be together with another event in the Technical University, which is the, the Fair for Inventions for Invent, which is a, a very old brand of our university, 21 years old. And uh, I think it's for the best. It means that we have a vibrant life for innovation, vibrant life for what means um, developments that our students can be into, can see, can, can uh, find their ways in, in the future um, activity. I would like to thank very much the participants to this workshop. And uh, I'll say that we are grateful to have Edify company here and today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Eruccio Grisoni. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Larbi Hanan. Thank you very much, Mr. Edwin van der Leden. Also, um, we are very grateful, grateful to have here Waygate Technologies, Mr. Chris Giles and Rich McAllister. And uh, together with us, a company that is very close to, to our heart, Emerson. Emerson, that is major employer here in Cluj. Emerson that in Cluj started in here, in this very building. Uh, ground floor was their first, uh, first point where they started to develop the company here. And thank you, Mr. Hora Corneliu Kisha, for uh, being here with us and organizing uh, these activities. So having said all that, I think the best for engineers is to talk about engineering. So, please. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dean, for the introduction. Um, I, I, I will switch to, to Romanian for a short introduction about um, what, what, what is the, the purpose of this conference, why, why are we here? Deci, numele meu este Cristian Stanciulescu și reprezint firma Total Control. Uh, și o să trec direct la, la subiect. De ce suntem aici? Uh, primul rând, ne bucurăm că suntem într-un mediu ingineresc, tehnic. Uh, evenimentul are loc 
în același timp cu târgul de inovație din cadrul universității și uh, venim și noi cu subiectul examinărilor nedistructive. Acest domeniu, poate în urmă cu câțiva ani, părea oarecum mai conservator. Uh, totuși, uh, în, în ultima vreme s-a aliniat a, 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 avântului tehnic global și uh, de aceea venim uh, aici pentru a prezenta o parte din uh, tehnicile avansate la acest moment. Um, mulțumim foarte mult uh, Universității Tehnicii din Cluj, care a apreciat această inițiativă a noastră și am organizat împreună această conferință și, desigur, ne-a pus uh, la dispoziție acest cadru foarte adecvat uh, unei astfel de conferințe. Uh, cum se va desfășura conferința? Colegii mei uh, specialiști din partea companiilor Edify și Wayge Technologies vor face câte o introducere pentru fiecare metodă disponibilă aici, cât subțint cât permite programul. După aceea, domnul Orea Crișan va prezenta cerințele pentru calificarea și certificarea personalului NDT actuale, foarte important conform ultimelor standarde, urmând ca la final să avem o sesiune hands-on în care puteți interacționa cu echipamentele, să faceți chiar și noastră un scan, o testare uh, interactivă. Uh, două, două lucruri mai vreau să precizez și putem uh, începe. Uh, Unul, doresc ca scopul acestei conferințe să fie interactivă. Vă rog să ne deranjați, să ne puneți întrebări, să, cum să zic, deși suntem în aula universității, aș vrea să fie mai mult ca o oră de laborator. Și doi, tehnica avansată nu echivalează cu complexitate, cu dificultate în utilizare, ci din contră, scopul e cu cât aparatura e mai high-tech, cu atât să fie mai ușor de utilizat. Vă mulțumesc și I will, um, I will introduce now uh, my colleague uh, Rucio Ghizoni from Edify, who will make um, a presentation about uh, the latest uh, technologies in Edify and Zitec portfolio. So, uh, Rucio, you are my guest. Thank you. So, I don't know. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm sorry, I'm speaking only English. <laughs> first, first thing. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you, thank you for for your welcome. Uh, thank you uh, to be there. Yeah, we are very happy. Uh, so um, my name is Yakucho Kezoni, and I'm representing the company Edify. Edify, it's a company which is uh, born in Canada uh, 20 years ago, and even more uh, before. But uh, that's what we are today developing, and we are presenting. Okay. So I'm here with one, uh, with two of my colleagues. I'm here with uh, Larry, and I'm here with Edwin. These these two persons are, are expert engineer, and they will present uh, to you today some of our instrument uh, on the, that we have developed for different solutions. I will not go into detail immediately for now, but it's just for to to give you this introduction. <coughs> I would like also to thank you. Um, Uh, total control with uh, Christian, and, uh, with Miguel and with the team, because I think it's very interesting also uh, to be there and uh, to share with you uh, our technologies. And last uh, thanks, it's uh, for you, uh, because uh, maybe some of you are starting the day very early and are coming. So it's always very nice to see customers who are interested in the development and in the technologies. Okay. So, uh, a few words uh, we are of course in uh, we provide ndt ndt instrument ndt solutions that's very important for us uh, the name of solution is important it's what we are providing today so not only an instrument not only a technology but also all which is around of a technology which is a software which is all the research all the development that we are able to propose and to do it's very important because uh, technology is a technology ultrasound is ultrasound Eddy current is Eddy current, RCFM is SCFM, 
but without any software, any development, any technologies, it's always the same from the last 50 years. <coughs> so that's the point, and that's what we are doing in Edify. We are developing each day all the different elements. Other point is about how value. This is a typical presentation from Edify, so I have to go inside of this. But uh, we are customer centric. We are innovating. 10% of our budget, 10% of our business today is allocated to research and development. So that's the reason is very important for us. We are team player. Team player, it's because everyone in the company is important. Everyone in the entity world is important. And we need each of us. We need new application. We need we, new technologies. So it's important to have really a thinking about the team. And we are result oriented because of course uh, what you are looking for is for solutions okay we have different uh, product already sold uh, more than twenty-five thousand product uh, we are 650 employees and we are covering all over the world yeah uh, so we are allocated uh, we are based sorry headquarters in quebec city in canada and after of course we are in different part of the world what we are providing, what we are doing today, it's uh, different technologies uh, uh, about NDT. So I think most of you know about all of this. Uh, I'm just going to give you a short view of all of this. It's, uh, first of all, it's uh, eddy current, electromagnetic. So uh, I think that, I, yes, I suppose that all of you know about this. We are providing uh, ultrasound, but phase array ultrasound with adjunction of, of course, TFM. So very, very complete system. We quite don't have anything in UT conventional. We are only speaking about UT phase array with TFM and with all the different elements. This is something that Edwin will uh, certainly go into detail. And back also for the electromagnetic, electromagnetic it will be Larbi who will present that. Today, we are not going to talk about, or we are not going to show uh, a round of MFL, magnetic flux leakage, uh, which is a technology who allowed us to see the corrosion, for example, in oil and gas application, for example, inside of a tank uh, or uh, on the roof or on the, on the maritime or so application. Magnetic flux leakage is very interesting technology. I will go after a little uh, inside of this and a very quick technology. Don't forget that it is a screening tool to give you the idea of the corrosion and don't give you the millimeter or the precision of the phase array instrument. We have also ACFM technology, alternative current field magnetic, which is a technology, a kind of derivation of the uh, eddy current uh, and gives you the possibility to see the defect on surface. Gated wave, long range UT, uh, robotic, and after we have a dedicated part. I don't know if it's working here. Yeah. yeah. No. Yes. We have a dedicated part also more oriented or all which is nuclear, nuclear application. You have one central in uh, in Romania. You have a, cent a nuclear central, and uh, also it's a technology, a Canadian technologies. So uh, it's interesting for us because we are we have worked a lot on this and we have developed a lot of solution on this. So for us, it's a perfect ma matching. Just going uh, briefly in the detail of different technologies. Uh, first of all, so edified uh, for all which is eddy current. We have instrument. We have three kind of instrument. We have one which is uh, ectan. Ectan. Uh, so it's an instrument to give you the possibility to see all the defect inside of a heat exchanger system, as you have seen on the first image. The second one is uh, ready. And we have here the presentation of the ready. So the ready is an instrument to give you the possibility to see the defect on surface. So we are, of course, going just on the first one, two, three millimeters of the surface, but it's very interesting. A lot of application for aerospace, for aeronautics also. And the last one, again, it's a eddy current, but it's pulse eddy current, PEC. So uh, it's interesting because that allowed you to see the corrosion on a pipe without taking away the insulation. So we are able to cross uh, uh, 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters of insulation and to see how it is the corrosion of the pipe without removing anything. We have also a PEC technology and PEC presentation here uh, today. 
Then I go on the other uh, range, which is UT. So UT also, we have a complete, uh, complete proposal for this. We have, uh, as a minimum, three instruments on this range, in M2M. Uh, we have a Mantis, we call, we have a Gecko, and we have a, a Panther. Mantis, we presented today, I think, we get. We have also the Gecko, and Panther, we don't have it because it's more for integration. The particularity of our instrument is that all of the instruments get the capability to have the TFM. We will go after in the detail for if some of you don't know about the TFM, but it's very important also for to cross, you know, high, high dimension or, for example, stainless steel or system like that. Uh, I don't go in the detail of all the technology because after we will spend too much time, but uh, uh, for to give you an idea, Mantis, it's a 1664 element up to 64 TFM. A Gecko, it's a one, uh, 64, 120 F, uh, 128, TFM 128. So it's a very powerful machine. We are selling it, we are providing it, for example, for group like uh, ITER or uh, all big um, society who, are, who need also this kind of uh, application. Another application interesting is about HTHA for the oil and gas also, uh, where they need to see the corrosion by hydrogen. Huh? Okay. That's it for UT. ZTEC, uh, ZTEC it's uh, the last company we have bought, but we know very well about them because it was their ZTEC. Uh, ZTEC, it's interesting because that gives us the possibility to go in the market of the nuclear. Uh, we have a lot of uh, background on this. We have a lot of experiences from the last, I would say, 30, 35 years in ZTEC uh, for all which is around of the uh, nuclear. So we are developing specific probe, we are developing specific instrument uh, for all this kind of application. And uh, inside of ZTEC, you have also one instrument, which is very nice, which is uh, also what we call the MIS-21, uh, little instrument, very oriented on the portability and also for the application of uh, aerospace or even rail uh, application. So you see, we are speaking about a lot of segment also. Uh, we have uh, a large portfolio. <coughs> Pardon, silver wing. I was telling you before, uh, silver, silver wing. So it's all the range that we are manufacturing in UK, in Swansea, and uh, it's all around of the MFN and some also element about UT. So uh, again, uh, you see the image. We have uh, developed some instrument. Uh, the image you see from the floor map, they call the floor map. Uh, it's uh, 13 or the 14 instruments of, uh, that we have developed. So each two, three years, we have a new instrument coming, and each time we are increasing. This instrument that you see here, for example, the floor map, gives you the possibility or for the operator to make a control like that. He's driving this uh, system, and at the end of the day, he's giving a reporting to the oil and gas company, you know, and giving in this reporting, he say, okay, here in this place, you have 80% of corrosion. Here you have 60%, here you have 20%, here you have 10%. That's very powerful system who give to the end user customer the possibility to change or to uh, um, uh, repair, repair the corrosion on a certain point. So it's very fast instrument, very quick instrument, and very technique instrument, okay? Uh, TSC, TSC is another technology, I would say. It's uh, what we call the ACFM. Huh? ACFM, we have, uh, we don't have here, but it is uh, two instrument. It's, uh, uh, I go slowly on this, but it is quite a substitution at all, which is um, uh, mani uh, Magneto. Uh, no, pardon, pas Magneto. Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking my words sometime in different language. I'm sorry for that. Um, and I start to be an old man uh, also. But um, I'm thinking about uh, penetrant. Voilà. Penetrant. Uh, so, in substitution of the penetrant, uh, it's a possibility with that. So, it's really an electronic instrument that gives you the possibility to measure uh, the size of uh, of a defect of a cracks in deep and in large, and so, which is not possi possible to do with the penetrant. Okay. I don't know. This application also is very useful for maritime application. For example, uh, with some customer like Saipam in Italy, we are using it a lot for the legs of the platform, uh, where we can go under the water, because all the system is also working under the water 
water up until 300 meters, for example, and you can check and you can control all of the welding inside of the water. Okay. Teletest. Teletest is another solution we are we are providing. So teletest here we are speaking about gated wave. Uh, we have yes, we have gated wave. This is the last instrument we have here. Very interesting also. Gated wave give you the possibility to see the corrosion on the pipe, but on a long range, uh, long range system. I mean, we can go up until 100 meters. Usually, we don't go so much. Huh? Uh, it's also interesting to go in the first 12 meter or whatever. But that gives you effectively the possibility to check the corrosion on the pipe in a very fast mode. You put the collier, you keep, the, you take the data. And after you analyze, and I will say that in 50 minutes, 20 minutes, you are able to see all the corrosion in 12 meters or 24 meters. So very fast, very fast instrument and very useful for oil and gas application. It's a new instrument also, so uh, we will uh, spend some time to show you. And the last one is about Inoctune. Uh, it looks simple, it looks mechanism because it's uh, robotic. Huh? But uh, what is interesting in this case, is that uh, uh, with uh, Inoctun, uh, we have, because we have all the different technology I just told you now at this time, Telecurrent, UT, SCFM, MFL. So the idea for us is to create a robot where we can plug on the top the different uh, head or the different uh, probes for to check the different possibility. So it's very open, uh, open system uh, where we can after provide a solution. Of course, robotic is important, for example, uh, for where in chemical, chemical customer like BASF or like uh, uh, Arkema or others, there is more and more restriction for to go inside of a tank, for example. So because uh, for human uh, being, it's uh, too dangerous. So that's the reason robotic is, is uh, increasing a lot because you can go inside of a tank without uh, uh, very safety, in a safety mode. Um, that's it. Last slide, and it is the most important one. Last slide is the most important one. is about Edify Academy. My, because I, I, I just give you a, a, just a surface view of all the technology we have, and we don't have the time for to, to go inside of all the detail. My advice will be if you can go when you have 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or even half an hour, you go in Edify Academy. Even for you, uh, for your participant, I also, it's very interesting. It's a quite a teaching system. Uh, we are developing in this system all the technologies. We explain what is the TFM. We explain what is the UT. We explain what is the current. We explain every technologies. Some of them are free. Some of them are a payment. Some of them are in Spanish, French, English, whatever. But it's very interesting and it's very easy because many often it's movie or it's explanation. So all the basic is the explanation are inside of this Edify Academy. Okay? And that's it. Okay. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I give the, I let spoke the expert now. Thank you very much. <laughs>
while the engine is still in, in situation. So just bear with me on, on that. Uh, I will go through it as slow as I possibly can. Uh, just make sure if you understand anything, I'm sure Christian can, uh, can go through it, uh, possibly in Romanian. My Romanian is very small. I only know how to make it, uh, how to order a beer and where's the toilet. You know, and that's the only ones that I specifically need to know. Everything else I can get away with. So that is fine. So let's get going. Okay. So uh, basically, what is RBI? Okay, we call it remote visual inspection. Okay. As you see there, obviously, it's a non-descriptive testing technique that employs the use of different camera capabilities remotely in order to assess the integrity of the components and infrastructure. Okay. Straightforward, very, very simple. But the technology has really gone high now <clears throat> on, on that side of it. These can, why would you do it? Well, some of the areas you can actually physically use are dangerous, okay? Um, and also to act and also for human intervention. So if you can stop where a human actually goes into uh, an area remotely and everything else, it's a lot safer and a lot healthier. Certainly on the environmental stages now, it's very, very... Uh, proactive to stop people going into entry uh, into into uh, some of the areas that you're concerned okay so this is, might be the interesting this is history there's only about six slides or eight slides <laughs> but where did it actually physically started as most people know endoscopy started in the medical industry okay um so obviously where most people have probably had a laparoscopy or and that side of it uh, where you've got an orifice, you can actually put a probe. So that's as far as I'm going there. Okay, on that side of it. The main difference between medical and industrial is we just take off the rough edges for the uh, for the medical side because it's a lot more or less painful. Okay, okay. So the idea of the obviously of the endoscopic uh, started to germinate inside the human mind ever since the ancient Greeks. So it goes back that far. Okay and the Roman areas, um, and what they used was polished candles and polished, uh, obviously, metal and sunlight to means transmitting light. Uh, I've seen some of the, some of the uh, uh, films that you've seen, <clears throat> they actually use um, shields and every polished shields and to transmit light and light up an area um, where you're actually going. But it goes back a long, long way. <clears throat> and one actually prevalent that came to is, the first obviously prototype of a device that resembled an endo endoscope was actually in Pompeii in 79 AD. So that's how far this process actually physically goes. They're very, very clever even in them days. So obviously where it came from. Okay, so the first guy actually d developed um, a human internal organs via a rigid tube was a kind called uh, Philip Bazzini. Okay, I think it was Italian. Was he Italian? Yeah, 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 okay. I, did, I just brought this in from my friend, my, my Italian friend. Um, so he was the one to observe human inter internal organs via a rigid tube that he created himself, okay? He made it himself, and it called a lightoscope. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Going on from there... Um, uh, Bonzini. Bonzini, sorry. Bonzini. I've got to get the termination right, okay? Bonzini. Okay, I'll just say that. Um, and this is actually what he developed, and this is actually the instrument he, he actually used. But look at the dates we're, we're talking about, 1805. So it shows you the technology that started way back, but, uh, but what it is uh, going forward. Going on to that, it, it was slightly about 50 years later, uh, if I remember. Um, a guy, we're into the French now, guys, we're into French now. So in, in 1853, a French physician called Antonio de, de, Desmarais. Desmarais? Desmarais? Okay. <laughs> Chris Rater, he created a small instrument to view the first time the urethrine tract of both men and women. And he called, that was the first time it was ever called, a uh, tool called endoscopy or endoscope. And I have actually a picture of the actual item here. Uh, this is the guy, um, obviously when he was alive, but, but they used the, the actual lighting medium there was a mixture of alcohol and turpentine, okay? Not very friendly, I would have thought, but even so. Uh, and this is an actual, the picture of the actual unit he actually physically made. So there's a wick there on the left-hand side, on that side of it. 
So that's really endoscopy coming from obviously way back to, to where we are. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, and where are they used? This is now where, <clears throat> into the modern day. I've picked a few few slides and everything else that I've actually been dealing with. Um, obviously, and <clears throat> even on obviously we have the unit there, but we have lots and lots of different. Uh, products within that market so you, you go in top end right down to the bottom end so there's a big difference in in spe specification and requirements as you can imagine because obviously some don't need all the equipment that you specifically need so <clears throat> i'm i'm um, aeronautical based so that is my goal uh, to be honest that's where i actually came from so um obviously this is probably one of our most important markets the aeronautical market so why would you think, uh, obviously, on, on the, obviously on a, a, a airline? Well, if you can imagine, they're very expensive. Okay, these <laughs> these engines are, and I don't know if you realise, but most engines are leased. Okay, the airlines lease the engines, so they do not pay until the engine starts turning. Okay, so the engine manufacturers, Pratt and Whitney, General Electric, um, and on. Going, going forward, lots and lots and more, obviously, Air and uh, Rolls-Royce, <clears throat> they do not want the engines to come off, so they have to be inspected. And they do produce uh, small in inspection ports at all the areas within the, within the engine. Um, but just to give you an idea, um, if you can save an engine having to be taken off a plane or, or being replaced, it's usually between anywhere between 300 and 750,000 dollars okay we're an American company sorry um, so because you've got to take into consideration the plane coming out of service then going in engine off engine going back on and then coming back in there and also they may have to replace the plane as well for 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 anything else so most engines on I fly a lot so don't worry too much most most airlines engines do have damage okay <laughs> on them okay but they are there is a, a, a strict tolerance that they can actually do and I can go through some pictures later on. Nice, friendly little helicopter here. <laughs> We've got the Apache and everything else. But this is an interesting one, obviously, power generation. Big market for us now, obviously, because there's green energy and everything else. So the wind turbine market is massive. Um, and I think it's growing. Um, Christian, I think you mentioned that the wind technology is starting to, to be prevalent in, in Romania. Yeah. So the main areas of issue, issue there with power generation is the gearbox. The gearbox is the main priority for inspections within our, our market, market sectors. So we sell an awful lot to Siemens, Vestas, and, and you keep going and, and everything else. <clears throat> you just don't want to go up there and do it. <laughs> it's a long way up on these, uh, these wind turbines. Certainly the ones offshore, they're quite big now. Okay. Another one is power generation. That's our second biggest market. Um, and we also now get into hydropower again, back to the turbines. So the turbines need the inspection um, for obviously wear and tear and every, obviously uh, degradation of the, of the components within the, term, the, the sector market. Nuclear power, that's another obviously high, high risk area that needs to be regularly inspected. So with using our equipment, we can actually physically do in that short time shutdowns and saving a, a, a lot of money. Oil and gas, big market again um, on, on that side of it. Processing plant. Um, the only thing is you've got to be careful using any probably electronic equipment or anything like this. You have to work what we call a hot work permit. Okay, so you have to have permission and they'll shut that section down because obviously potential explosion risks and, and everything else. Unless you have an ATEX rated equipment. ATEX rated is basically a proven system that will not cause any explosions, but there's not, I'm not sure if there's any on the market, to be honest, at the moment, because uh, they're very expensive to produce. This one is, is I just slipped this one in because it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, security, big, big issue that obviously in the market that we have at the moment, uh, going through obviously all the turmoils and everything else, they, they're quite um, obviously rigorous to see what's actually being transferred over borders and everything else, certainly for drug uh, and, and everything else in, in, uh, involved on that side of it. So what they do is uh, obviously I put in their truck tire and you think well, why a truck tire and the valve 
for the air within, within that. I got told to go to uh, for an inspection at the customs uh, section in in, uh, in London, and what they'd had was that a truck had come in, uh, and they suspected drugs, but they couldn't find them. So what they for some reason they said, okay, so we took the inner core, the actually valve stem out of actually the, the tire on the right hand side. And we actually put a very, very small four millimeter or it's 3.9 millimeter probe inside the, inside the actual tire. And that's where all the drugs were wrapped around the inside of the tire. Okay. So once they found that, they just ripped the whole thing apart. <laughs> so it's proof of anything. Because if, if, if any Border Patrol or anything like that, they, they suspect anything, obviously, with drugs or everything else, but they can't find anything, they have to have it fixed, basically. So there's a cost in, in, involved in, in that. So just quite an interesting one on that side of it. Another market is obviously transportation. <coughs> uh, the cars... Uh, obviously the Range Rovers and the tr trains used all over the world, used actually all over the world. And obviously on the ships, cargo ships, vessels and everything else, they actually uh, are used an awful lot. So moving on, um, basically ship engine inspections. What I wanted to do was just show you the, if you know the size of a normal car piston or a bike piston and anything else, this uh, is a typical piston that goes in one of the engines, okay? You have to crane them out. They are so big and so heavy. Um, and this is uh, a company called Wartzilla that's actually doing doing this this actual job regarding this. How, so, how big is an engine uh, on a ship? They have a typical engine that goes into one of the cargo ships or or certainly the cruise liners, and they're normally between two and four per ship, depending on the size of them. You know, so so now. In fact, there's a new ship just just come out. The uh, passengers can be seven and a half thousand passengers now, actually on this on this ship, uh, which is what, one of the Royal Caribbeans. So that just gives you an idea, obviously, where you can actually physically go into there, <clears throat> into the units uh, and everything else. So basically, what I want to do now is just show you a little bit of technology that we've actually moved from. Okay. So it was what you call this true sight imaging. To get a very good, obviously, resolution and everything else and, and, uh, and measurement capabilities, you need light, you also need resolution. So what we have here, basically now, is obviously we have on, on my system uh, what we call a, a high-definition probe, and it just gives you an image uh, on the right-hand side of the difference between the actual pixel ratings that you can actually get. Um, so it, it's a lot crisper image, image that, that, uh, that is required nowadays on regarding uh, what would be a standard definition uh, pro. This is a very, very small imager, but now, as you know, with, with, with phone cameras and everything else, the technology is moving on dramatically, okay, on that side of it. So image transformations, basically, it's based, we have a lot of, uh, obviously, uh, selections that you can actually physically make to actually uh, enhance the actual uh, resolution of your uh, your picture that you want. So uh, basically HDR, so what's high dynamic range? This is one of the main differences. If you look at a normal picture on the left hand side to the more picture on the right hand side, it gives you more capability of getting the correct image that you specifically want. Not measurement, just image. Okay, so, so uh, we're giving you the features and the functions available to get the right answers. Dark boost image. This is a, a this is uh, basically one we we produced ourselves. So what normally happens on when you have an image, you see something in the foreground which is okay, but you miss the detail in the background. So it's important to see. Well, there might be something in the background that we can't actually physically see. So on the right hand side, you can actually physically see when the dark boost has has been turned on the system, what it actually does. And I've actually got a live uh, presentation here. Of, so this is what we call dark boost. This is actually on the physical screen. Um, so now what it's doing now is we're just selecting dark boost on, and you'll see the difference. Massive difference, you know. So you can clearly see the advantages. You don't have to be uh, uh, Einstein to, <laughs> to work the work that particular one out. And then you can reset it to to normal capabilities. So very very useful product and everything else. 
We have another pro uh, product uh, that's automatically put on, is automatic noise reduction, or ANR we call it. So when you take, obviously, uh, with images and everything else, you have noise. You can't stop noise. So the further away, the more noise you get, which is on the left-hand side picture. But if you turn ANR on, you'll see the difference between the two. And again, it's just credibility of the actual image that you wanted to do on that side of it. So what we've got here, specialist measurements. I'm rushing through this a little bit. But some of the things we can actually physically do is now, rather than a 2D image, we have a 3D image, okay? So it's more, more credible for the surface and more accuracy that you can actually physically go through, okay? Not gonna go through it all on that side of it. So a standard 2D image and a 3D image, you see the two, two differences between the two, which is quite straightforward. We have nine actual measurement types we can actually use. Uh, we're the only ones that do nine. Um, so it covers all the aspects of, uh, of, of obviously how can what measurements you require to do that obviously on that side of it. But we're just going to go through a couple. So this is what we call automatic blade blade automation. And we're going back again to turbines. Uh, basically, if you can understand, there's a shroud and then there's a blade passing past it. There's an actual minimum and maximum gap between the two, and that has to be. Um, the current at the time. If it's too much, they're losing power and everything else. So what this does, it measures the actual physical gap uh, automatically. Um, and uh, it's actually running now. So when the blade is actually moving, we can turn on the actual blade tip clearance. And it will actually work it out its physical self for you. Um, with again, a maximum minimum and an average between the two. Okay. Again, this is all automatically done for you. So it makes it a lot quicker, credibility, and we have this proven. So then we can actually go into different views of the same measurement you've just done. And this is your 3D image capture that you've physically done. So you can actually have a, a very good uh, representation of the actual measurement you've actually took. So you know it's accurate, okay? The problem being in the past, is that we did not know where you're putting your cursors on your 2D image to see if that out we was actually um, accurate. With a 3D image, you don't make any mistakes. Okay. We also have what we call auto repeat function. So if you can imagine one blade, and then you're, you're going through the processes and doing that, we know, now have an automatic feature. So it, it automatically you just stop it, and it'll do the same measurement over and over again because some of these you know 112 blades on an engine is is typical. This is a weld. So the, again, we've got a different kind of measurement capability. Um, so on here, we will do a, a depth measurement or area depth profile. So it's scanning the actual uh, route. The first three cursors that it's actually putting in is, is lining up a datum. Okay, it needs a datum. That's what they call the green mask. The green mask makes, uh, suggests that it, it's between three points is plus or minus 1%. And then, obviously, you have more data, more features that you specifically wanted to regarding that. So it's a lot more inter, uh, interactive that you wanted to, and you can actually manipulate it around. And it's great for reporting. And of course, if it was, if it was the opposite way, it would obviously be a, a, a curvature in, internally. So what we've also got on this one, if you wanted to, you've stored all your information and everything else, and you wanted to check, make sure you've got the right information, we have the same capabilities where you can go back and actually remeasure what what's one of your counterparts or engineers have physically done, which is really, really good, because you might have missed something on that side of it. Also, what we've gone now is gone now into technology, into, into the software transfer of, in, of, uh, of the unit itself regarding uh, digital, what we call digital sets. So live calibration and data transfer. So now we, we've got, obviously, the local and wireless system. So I've got my iPad there. I can show you later on if you wanted to. Um, so I can control the iPad from at the top if I wanted, sorry, not the iPad, I can control my, um, obviously, video probe from the back of the, the screen if I wanted, sorry, cinema, um, and uh, and do all everything for that. So I'm not actually touching the unit. I can use it by uh, even now the iPhone, 
and also an Android phone as well will operate the system uh, remotely. Yeah, you've got. Uh, we can do. I've just got a little bit. We'll do that in a second. And that, so we'll click that up. I'll flick through this, and then we can click onto that. So what we can inspection works connect global. Basically, this is a, a system that we can actually link it to a remote expert anywhere in the world. Okay, and he can or she. I won't be sexist, <laughs> can actually operate the system and at the same time control, not control, actually um, talk to the actual engineer and just say, we've actually got a problem here as a remote expert PC screen he's looking at or she's looking at, and then you've got the operator. But don't get me wrong, he could be in, the operator could be in, in the Middle East, the other could be in America, and you are talking, talking at the same time via chat actually on the system. The one on the left-hand side is saying, uh, obviously, if you can't read the content, he's saying, I need, there's an area of concern. And he said, well, where's the area of concern? So what he does, he actually physically tells her where, or him where he, that's the area of concern. So he will then obviously target target that area. But that's actually through, through the system itself um, that it's actually physically doing. Because our system now creates its own hotspot. Um, so, and that's what it's connected to at the moment. So uh, it can go any, anywhere on that, on that side of it. Okay, MDI, which is really, really good. Can I mention the two companies that currently use it in, in Romania? Okay, so what, what is uh, MDI? So if you're doing a, an, a, an inspection, um, normally can take four hours, five hours to do this inspection, and you're doing step-by-step uh, -step different, different logs, this is automatically on the system. Okay, so you will have a, like a certain engine and then you would go through the tree, which is on in the center uh, and it will go through each individual one. And then you have to log and take the image and it's automatically sent obviously onto the system. Because before what would normally happen is somebody will have a piece of paper and just be writing down what images they've taken and it could be like this. So what, is, what does that say? A typical report at the end of an inspection would take between anywhere two and four hours at the end of the job. So we did this in, in a company, uh, you probably know them, Aerostar. Is it Aerostar? Aerostar and Fieldcore. Fieldcore. Um, they now use this all the time. Every single time they use this and it saves them hours. And of course, hours cost money. Okay. So that's one run, really good benefit regarding that. All the data tagged and all the information is, is straightforward. So they would just go through the whole inspection and right at the end of the inspection, they would actually physically generate their own report. Okay, so they just have to some. This is some of the damages that you can actually physically see that uh, is on the report. And again, they're all, like I say, all these tagged and everything else, the Dicondi tagged, uh, similar to the medical industry and everything else, plus video, okay? So you can have a video put into the actual MDI report. Um, but this is a typical report. Obviously, this could be 20 pages long or whatever. Um, and this is how it would actually be um, transferred into Word or, or PowerPoint at the end, of, sorry, not PowerPoint, in PDF format. Really, really good. Saves a fortune to the customer on that side of it. And the favorite saying is, that's free. <laughs> so it's, it's quite, uh, quite good on that side of it. So there is some uh, new advances that we've made in the last, last year, to be honest. It's called uh, Advanced Defect Recognition. This is going on to the, uh, a new technology now. So what we're doing now is defect recognition. So the system itself will actually find um, and log potential defects as you're going through it, scanning it by itself, okay? Doesn't mean to say that it, it will say, oh, there's a, there's a dent here and it's out of tolerance and everything else. The inspector will still have to accept it or de decline it, but it basically it's just telling it there's a possible error here. Um, sorry, some kind of defect here. And a, a typical defect is on this particular one, like HP, uh, sorry, HPC's high, pressure uh, compress compressor, the stage two, leading, blade two leading edge. And then obviously the back end, you've got the trailing edge. But this is a tear it's picked up. And there's, a, there's actually a what we call a sense of percentage of what things. So they said, okay, so we think there's a 75% chance that that's a defect. We, we, we see it, it is certainly a, a defect on, on that one. So it's, it's like I say, it's new technology that's come in 
um, and uh, and obviously uh, it makes it a lot simpler and a lot there. This is internally a running engine. Obviously, in the turbines, you probably don't see this, but we can actually see it. So at the foreground, uh, you see the dent on that. But the, the inspector might have missed. There's actually a potential one at the back. And he, I, he probably didn't even see that on the left-hand side. He might not have seen that. But the system's already picked it up. It's only given it a 21% chance of a, of a defect, but it's a possibility. So he would actually then go in there and particularly measure that particular dent. We, obviously, we can measure all these dents internally and everything else. Uh, obviously, it's picked up a crack there, straightforward on that side of it. Looks a bit damaged, to be perfectly honest. And these, these are actually, uh, you're looking at the crack, but at the back end, you're missing a rub, what we call a rub. So something is catching actually on the shroud edge, uh, which we needed to do. Obviously, uh, analytics and everything else, we can actually proprietary and everything else. We do an awful lot with Rolls-Royce and General Electric, which is our previous company. Um, so we are always working for uh, the next step of the, what we call intelligent boroscope uh, or boroscopy and endoscopy. Inspection works, obviously, it goes to the cloud straight for the unit if it's set up for, for that. Um, and it can be, obviously, web-based and, and you can have your own secure um, services with it within that and it will go directly to the cloud so you're not even saving it all the images go straight to the cloud all your reports go straight to the cloud and then whoever has access to those cloud that cloud base can interrogate what you've just put up there and you can pull it back as well so it's vice it's both it's both two-way um on, on that side of it and again this is the, obviously store analyzed web-based i'm not going to go through all that this is just a uh, a final uh, part of it, uh, and it's just the roadmap that we specifically wanted to do on on that side of it. So insight, like I said, is the same scenario. We can just go through. I'm just going to flick through these basically on, on that side of it, uh, and the the outcome is basically um, is for better decisions and outcomes, improve the quality, consistency, and access across operations, and repeatability of this of the measurement techniques from engineer to engineer. Okay. Uh, enable greater operative visuals, operations, supporting APM strategies um, and reduce cost, which is vital, certainly on airlines, time and resources requiring on each inspection on, on those. And these are just videos that we have on the systems and everything else. You can go onto those and everything else. Uh, they're free, um, but it just gives you an answer. We're on YouTube a lot now as well with new different techniques and everything else that we bring out all the time. And like obviously Richard said, we have our own academy as well. So we have our own training academy that um, senior, obviously, inspectors go over and get trained, not on the engine, but how to use the equipment actually on an engine. Okay, because we're not certified on those engines, but we are certified to use the equipment and show them the, how to get the best results. We could do it, but we're not allowed. So I'm not saying too many questions on that side. Of it. So what I want to do is, if we can, do you want to click onto it, Christian? Uh, go on to a live. Uh, we're over there, mate. <laughs> Just take my iPad out you, if you want. I'm going to just do a quick uh, measurement. Yeah. Uh, so, endoscopy. Right, there we go. Okay, so this is a typical, obviously, uh, as you know, laparoscopy that you do in there and everything else. Um, actually, they're very big, a lot bigger than these, to be perfectly honest, and I'm surprised that they don't happen smaller. So, obviously, we've got full, obviously, full control and everything else that we specifically want to do. And it's really important that you have light, okay, uh, on that side of it. So, get it back out. Um, on that side. So, but what I'm going to do now <coughs> is just it's very, very difficult to take uh, a measurement facing forward uh, within uh, a sector market because it's looking for pixels, pixels, and it's also scanning the profile. But what I've done now is obviously we've got this in, inside tube. So what we want to do is take a, a measurement. And this is how quickly we have to physically take a measurement. I'm just in, initializing the 3D image capture. What that's doing now is scanning that profile internally. It works on grayscale, so it's, it's lining them all up. 
So what you can do now is select your measurement capability, and those are all the different ones that we've got. RBI and visual inspections, and certainly the training, it depends on what kind of measurement you think is going to be capable of actually to get the right result. Okay? So you think that's going to be a, a, a length on that one, but no, you actually specifically want to do a, a depth measurement. Brings up the first cursor, you can either do it by hand or because it's touch screen. Any red areas that it goes, it advises the actual engineer. So, excuse me, there's no data coming back. We need data. So, there's no pixels or a shiny surface, really shiny surface or, or related. You know, basically saying, I need, I need something else to do it. So, you've got to move the actual unit itself. So, setting the data up is three points. An also rate, and so 6.98, we've got to drop the diameter straight away. So it gives us a view now. We can go to full view. So the internal tube on that side of it, and there's your internal tube. What's really important is, the, is that part there. We know the data is flat. If it's been a smaller curve, you need to get those three items to take out the, uh, the curvature regarding that. But, but now we can actually physically go in and measure. Uh, you want to do, or even have a look around. This is actually blown people, you know, re, re, the market has uh, gone mad for this particular product, and it's very, very useful on that side. Very, very quick, very easy. Um, don't think there's anything else we can do. <laughs> you know, that. So if you're happy with that, and obviously if you want to play with it, by all means, afterwards, we can have to play. So thank you very much, and appreciate it. I've been quick. <laughs> But uh we can go from there. So if any questions later on, by all means, you can actually do that. And have a play with it if you want. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Larbi Alal. I work for Edify and I'm located in France. And uh, now I'm going to talk about eddy current array called ECA, uh, meant for surface inspection. So we're going to make a quick introduction, uh, present instrumentation and the software. Uh, I will show you also the equipment, so the probes, the, material, the instruments and the probes and the accessories. Uh, we'll have a quick overview on the different applications per market. And uh, at the end, we have a slide with additional resources, links that will be available as the uh, presentation will be transferred to you enfin, uh, at the end of the, the day. Uh, talking about ECA, for those who are familiar with eddy current, uh, usually uh, eddy current is well known with pencil probes. So you have a single element you see on the top. Uh, and you have to uh, use your single probe to look after a crack. So it's very easy to miss a crack if you don't pass the tip of the probe on top of it. Having an array of probe uh, will help you have a larger coverage in one single pass. Uh, so higher speed uh, compared to a single element ECT, you have less dependency on the operator skills, for example and you will end with a C-scan, a cartography, so similar to uh, what you have with the UT phase array, for example. Uh, what ECA can detect? Any uh, surface breaking flows, of course, so it can be a crack, can be pitting, porosities, uh, well suited for uh, weld inspection. Uh, you can also monitor uh, property variations, so a difference in hardness or uh, permeability or conductivity eventually. And uh, when it comes to non-ferretic materials, you can also inspect and look for subsurface defects and eventually far surface defects uh, on tin material like uh, um, stainless or aluminum, for example. Uh, very often, uh, why using ECA instead of uh, standard, I would say, uh, surface inspection technique, PT or MT? Uh, you see the table and you will have it. Um, we are faster than ECT, enfin PT or MPI, for example, uh, you will end with data recording uh, that will be, uh, you will be able to post-process, so uh, post-processing analysis where MPI and PT requires to be on the material directly. 
So uh, some benefit, less chemicals, uh, obviously. Uh, so that's it for the comparison. So talking about the instruments here today, we brought the ready system. So the one on the left, you can see. So a portable instrument, but we also have another, uh, what we call a remote data acquisition unit, RDAU system, the Ectain 3, by the way. Uh, my presentation is a little bit uh, old. Uh, we have this new Ectain 3 uh, released uh, recently. Um, portable instrument for the ready, as I said, so available with different configuration, 32, 64, 128 channels. The number of channels will di directly impact the coverage uh, of your inspection. So the larger, uh, the, the width of the scan that you'll be able to, to, to do. Um, Ectane 3 is similar to Ectane 2 with some new features, but I don't have it here, so I will just skip that. Uh, both system works work, sorry, with the Magnify software. Magnify software uh, has a, an easy user interface, I will say, uh, and allows you to have a full C scan, so top view of your test piece of the surface you're inspecting. Um, with the advanced and um, advanced feature like a 2D, 2D 3D real-time filtering, for example, post-processing also available with the software. Talking about the probes, we have uh, off-the-shelf probes. So those are catalog probes that does exist in different configuration, different length, uh, different frequencies, of course. The iFlex on the left uh, is one of the most flexible and versatile uh, probe that we have. We have a padded probe in the middle that is better suited for weld inspection to adapt to the geometry of the weld, for example. Semi-flexible is for a um, cur fin, curved surface, I would say. Uh, and we have some very specific probes like the gear probe, uh, so dedicated for uh, in mining or turbine inspection, for example. The spine that we have brought today, uh, which is a large eddy current array probe for uh, stress corrosion cracking uh, detection. The shark, uh, we have the shark high resolution here today. So this is uh, an evolution of eddy current array we call TCA, TCA yes, tangential eddy current array. Uh, that allows you not only to size the length of the defect of the cracks, but also to size the depth of the crack, which is the most important part. And the Shark HR, as I said, which is uh, here today available. Different accessories, of course, encoder, uh, dedicated encoder, a manual uh, scanner, for example. And we have a set of different calibration blocks, so welded or not welded, with uh, made of aluminium, made of stainless, made of carbon steel. You can have all type of uh, conductive material. I forget to say, but the current, of course, is uh, only applicable on conductive material. Uh, what we can do also, beside those um, off-the-shelf probes, is custom probes. So dedicated probe for a, a specific application. So a specific geometry, a specific uh, material, a specific defect, looking for very tiny defects. Uh, we used to uh, send these uh, 10 questions to our customers just to uh, know exactly what are their uh, specification and expectation. And from there, we can build a custom probe on purpose. We, uh, Erucho uh, talked about that in the presentation uh, earlier. So we have uh, also a full blended training program available on the Edify Academy. If you uh, connect to the Edify website, you will access to some free e-learnings and some more dedicated e-learnings, so dedicated to the spine news, for example, or the shark. Uh, some of them are free, as, as uh, Erosho said. Some of them are part of the full purchase when you have the equipment, uh, when you order the equipment. Uh, this is just an overview of a typical ECA starting kit, so having one instrument, so portable or not portable. Uh, the software, of course, we have software embedded in the system for the ready, of course, but you can also have a, a laptop version, so just for post-processing of the data, eventually. Uh, a probe that will be adapted to your application and the necessary uh, accessories, encoder, calibration block, etc. Talking about ECA application, I have a lot of slides, so I will probably skip uh, some of them. I uh, will we'll go, sorry, uh, quite fast here. But the presentation will be available at the end. And if you have any question, you have my email in the first slide. So don't hesitate to, uh, to drop an email. 
So ECA uh, is applicable uh, uh, is uh, applicable yes on power generation, aviation, defense, uh, well inspection, pipeline integrity, petrochemical, rail, mining, etc. Um, here a quick overview of what we can do on power generation is uh, gas turbine inspection. So it can be the blade, the dovetails, uh, the holes, grooves, etc. We have dedicated pro for that. You can see here an example. And on top right of the slide, uh, an overview of a calibration block. So that calibration block that you will use to uh, set up your equipment before starting the inspection of your parts. Uh, another uh, type of probes, uh, dedicated probe for groove, for example, uh, and bore holes. Uh, this one uh, is a dedicated probe uh, for nuclear fuel roads inspection. So uh, it's very important to keep those roads tight. Uh, you have uh, uranium inside, uh, high pressure also inside, so you don't want that to leak and contaminate your primary loop in the nuclear plant, for example. So this is a a dedicated probe for the this uh, inspection and you can see a variety of dedicated probe so it can be ultra flexible can be very tiny uh, to access a small uh, space for example uh, Chris was saying that uh, wind turbine uh, is a big market is a big market also for uh, eddy current um, application uh, at height, it might be difficult to do MPI, for example, it might be difficult to do penetrant testing. Uh, usually penetrant testing requires to remove the coating, remove the paint. Eventually you can do MPI over paint, but it shouldn't be too thick. So eddy current can be a, a good alternative, uh, can be either used with a remote magnetic crawler, or it can be used also by um, rope access uh, operators. Aviation, so uh, in complementary to uh, uh, the end endoscopy, you can do plenty of different uh, application and uh, inspection. Uh, here is an example of a dedicated um, uh, bench we built for a customer uh, in France, uh, being able to inspect the holes uh, in, uh, in one part of the, of the engine with different set of probes. So we have three probes. You put the, the, the parts you have to inspect on it, and then you are able to inspect all the holes inside, as you can see here. So this one is really dedicated probe. Uh, the size is dedicated to this model of engine, but can be deployed on uh, other uh, engines, of course. Uh, an example uh, of what we can build, a uh, bespoke solution with a very small five millimeter diameter uh, probe with an array of coils also. I will skip that one, skip that one. Uh, a particular uh, development we made maybe three, four years ago uh, for fuel hose, refueling hose used to refuel uh, military um, air pla uh, from planes. Uh, they were looking for corrosion uh, because you don't want this type of hose to fail while you are uh, filling uh, uh, fuel, refueling, I mean. So this is a kind of uh, solution that can be uh, developed uh, at Edify. Uh, aircraft wheel also uh, important when you fly to be safe. So you don't want to have uh, any damage on the wheel, uh, risking any accident. So uh, this is something we can do with the flexible array probe. Dedicated to uh, launcher on inspection also. Uh, and we have also built some solution, dedicated solution for a, a space industry. So we are working with SpaceX on a regular basis and uh, in France also with the Ariane, Ariane Group. I'll skip that one. Uh, carbon steel weld. Carbon steel weld uh, has been a challenge uh, for a long time because if Eddy Current Array is able to detect a crack, surface breaking cracks, uh, we have only the ability to measure the length, which is similar to what you do with PT and MT. Uh, now with this new technology that has been developed by Edify five, five years ago, six years ago, the tangential eddy current array, we are not only able to size the length, but we can give an, uh, a measurement of the depth. And, and this is the most important information you need uh, when you are facing crack, for example. 
So different type of probes are uh, available, uh, either for butt weld or fillet weld, or we have also a set of pencil probe. So that, those are the standard probe uh, we call Shark G2, so second generation. And you also have, uh, well, I will show that later, uh, fine, later but the high resolution one, uh, more dedicated to uh, stress corrosion cracking um, uh, detection and sizing. So here with the standard shark probe, we can size depth up to seven millimeter. Uh, if it is bigger or deeper than seven millimeter, you still will, you will be able to see it, but you will not be able to measure if it is 7.5 or nine, the limit will be at seven millimeter. Um, scan is encoded, so for length sizing, it's, uh, it's uh, more accurate, of course. And the scanning speed is important also. Uh, we claim that we go faster than MPI or PT, so uh, here with the, this probe you can go up to 200 millimeter per second uh, during your scan. This technology actually uh, is compliant with uh, one AS ASTM code. Uh, that's what we are... The, the, the most difficult challenge we are facing using eddy current array is the applicable standards. So now ECA has been introduced recently in the ASME code, but we are still lacking some ISO standards, so hopefully it will come uh, in the next future, and then you will be able to use uh, a real um, standard and code, uh, compliant code to, uh, for your applications. Uh, pipeline inspection, of course, uh, tank floor can be inspected also, annular welds, if you're looking for cracks. Uh, I forgot to mention, but the shark uh, is also uh, able to inspect with coating. So up to uh, one, two millimeters of coating. You don't need to remove the coating. You don't need to send blast. No surface preparation is, is, uh, is required here. Remote inspection. Uh, basically, what we do, uh, Erucho was talking about a company, Inuktun, that uh, was bought by Edify a few years ago. So they have magnetic crawlers. We can set a probe on the magnetic rollers and with a cable, uh, like a 20, 50, 30 meter of cable, we can do remote inspection with the probe, having the, the real live um, data and uh, uh, during, fun during the inspection. Pipeline integrity uh, is a specific topic. Uh, we've been approached to develop a solution. Usually those pipe, um, Initial inspection is made with the, what we call ILI, so inline inspection. So you have uh, instrumented uh, pigs inside long length of pipe to look for corrosion, look for cracking. Uh, and when they found cracks, they have to prepare some dig, uh, access to the pipe directly, remove the coating, and then usually you have a length of maybe 12 meter of pipe uh, full of cracks and you need to uh, locate the cracks. So you have two to four people doing MPI everywhere. We take hours. Uh, it's not really comfortable to do MPI at the six o'clock position when you're on the ground, on your back, etc. So this solution that was were developed by Edify is now uh, currently used in Canada, US, France mainly. Uh, we have this spine probe that can go up to 600 millimeter per second. Uh, as an inspection speed, covering 200 millimeter in one single pass, so several passes across along the circumference, I mean, with the correct overlap, will allow you to have the full surface of your pipe within an hour or two, maybe. And from there, you will be able to locate the indication and come back to this indication with the shark, the shark HR, so high resolution, that will give you the depth of the crack. And from there, it's easy for the, 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 the asset owner to either remove the crack by grinding, or eventually if the crack are too deep, uh, think about cutting, replacing the part, and before that they use, uh, usually they put a, uh, like a sleeve on top of the, the pipe, just to maintain the integrity of the pipe for a, a long time enough to, to uh, prepare the maintenance and the replacement. So quickly, the spine, uh, so here in a uh, illustration, sorry, of what we do with MPI. So you see the uncomfortable position at six o'clock uh, laying on your back. Uh, so not that easy. The spine uh, here uh, gives you, you will see on the sample I brought. So this sample is from the field. Uh, we had a, a piece of pipe cut full of cracks. 
and and we had the chance to uh, to um, find that the asset owner gave gave it to us. So you will see real defects uh, on it. Uh, I will skip that slide. Just an overview of the range and the specification of the probe, so the scan speed, the lift of tolerance, etc. Uh, the temperature of operation also. We can use the probe up to 150 uh, degrees C. So that's an important information to have. And basically, uh, the spine is made of a scanner with different length of cable with the probe that can be replaced. So different models, uh, different frequencies meant for ferritic or non-ferritic materials. And then you have magnetic wheels, if necessary, on carbon steel. Of course, if you're inspecting stainless steel uh, pipe, the magnetic wheels become uh, useless. Uh, spare encoders, protective tape, because you want also your probe to last uh, as long as possible. So a comparison between a real uh, colony of stress corrosion cracking on the right uh, with MPI and the signal that you will get on the left with eddy current array. On the right, you need to remove the coating. You need eventually to prepare the surface, so sandblast. And then you do the MPI. And depending the orientation of the defect, you have to uh, do your inspection accordingly if you have a longitudinal crack or a, a transversal cracks. ECA, you have nothing to do. And even with some coating, you can still do the inspection and get the same results. An overview of a 360 degree circumference. So this is a 80 inch, so uh, I forget how <laughs> what's the length in in, uh, in meter, but uh, a long pipe, let's say, where it's very easy to locate the area and the colonies of stress erosion cracking, and then come back with the the shark to do the, the inspection. Uh, I skip this quickly because there's a lot of things ongoing. So the shark, again, um, different coverage, uh, shark. It's like the spine, I uh, forget to say, but there's no uh, parameter adjustment. The system is studied from the beginning and can be used by anybody. So no, fine. it's always better to have an understanding of the technology, of course, but there's no requirement to be level two or three in, in, in eddy current because you cannot play with the frequency. It's set for the application. You cannot use any filter. Those are set already at the beginning and same for the shark. Uh, the type of data that you can collect with the shark. So you see on the top this, this uh, defect uh, with the MPI, the C scan that you will get with the shark, the strip chart that you have on the bottom, and the depth sizing, which is automated. So we have an algorithm in the system that will automatically give you uh, the size. I will be able to demonstrate that to you uh, later this afternoon during the demo uh, period. Some studies have been made, uh, so uh, based on the real depth compared to the measurement done with the shark. And you see here, our curve, the unity plot is not that bad. Uh, we will not be 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 millimeter accurate, but the accuracy will be good enough to uh, give good information to the, to the asset owner at the end. Application of uh, eddy current array uh, in petrochemicals, so uh, piping again, storage tanks, uh, reformer, furnace, etc., uh, can be applied on surface on ferritic and non ferritic material. Uh, here, an example of reformer tube, for example, made of carbon steel. So it's a difficult or challenging application because of the material itself. The material is ferromagnetic. So uh, permeability is not always constant uh, along the, 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 the tube itself. So we have to implement some strong magnets in the probe to saturate the, the material locally and being able still to detect the, the defect. Uh, in the final presentation that you will get, there's a short video. I will pass the video now, but you will see how it works and uh, the, the motorization of the, of the, the probe. Up. Uh, an overview of stress corrosion cracking again, but this time not on carbon, but stainless steel piping. So you see on the top uh, the result of um, um, peneton testing, sorry. Uh, and here what you can get at the bottom with uh, a spine probe. Uh, so the, the C-scan cartography that highlights directly where the defects are and how they look like. Uh, you will have maybe some question about the, uh, the detection capabilities of eddy current array. So here's an example. 
of what we can detect. Uh, most of the time, uh, when you uh, do an inspection with PTMT, you comply with MTPT codes. So uh, you will end with an acceptance criteria of 0 0.5 or 1 millimeter. And the goal for a current array is to be able to match this, uh, uh, the same acceptance criteria. So here, for example, you see on the far uh, left of the C-scan a 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 uh, pit, which is easy to detect, of course. Just one thing to keep in mind is that even if we have a paint or a coating, we are still able to detect. And this is also something I will be able to demonstrate to you. I have a plate here with different uh, size of defect uh, with uh, just a piece of tape on top of it. So just to create some lift off and simulate painting. And eddy current array doesn't require any uh, specific, uh, I would say, uh, surface preparation. A real pipe from a client with all the detection. The detection can be automated. Uh, so you just set up a threshold in amplitude, for example, and phase, minimum phase, maximum phase, and the software will be able to, to spot all the, the, the de detected defect. Just checking the time because I don't want to run out of time. Ah, okay. Uh, so I'm good. I have to speed up if I want to cover also the, the pulse sequence. Uh, an example of uh, internal inspection uh, required. So uh, we developed in-house this scanner that can adapt to a range of uh, diameters with one single eddy current array probe able to rotate 360 degree. And you can do uh, several passes to do the, your inspection. Uh, this is meant for straight tubes, not for elbows. Uh, elbows is a bit more complicated to pass. Um, Rail industry, we have developed some specific probes uh, to inspect uh, uh, fillet weld also, uh, either on cars, uh, but you can also uh, use eddy current array or tangential eddy current array on rails, on axles. Uh, I skipped the video. Here, the use of a flexible probe just to look after this uh, particular area, curved area. Uh, wheels can be inspected too with the current array instead of uh, cleaning everything and trying to do MPI or trying to do PT uh, in service. So no need to dismantle everything. You can do uh, an inspection uh, at the, the, the train station, I would say. Mining, mining. Uh, we know the size if we know the size and the geometry of the the the, uh, the pinion i will say uh, it's easy either we have the probe already or we can build the probe uh, bespoke probe to cover the, the area and one single pass allow you again to find crack uh, in this uh, on these parts i think that that video might be interesting if it works it does work so the benefit of eddy current array compared to the other techniques, as you can see here, there's no cleaning required. So the pinion is full of grease, and you can still do the inspection live and see if you have any defect, uh, and then focus in the area of the defect to clean and only where, where, where uh, it's needed, sorry. So yeah, mining can be a, a, a good uh, market also. I think I'm at the end of the presentation, so some uh, links uh, here, uh, dif different blog articles, different applications, robotics, wind turbine, etc. Uh, this will be available. You have a direct link to the online source, so you will see, you will have access also to the different type of probes that we have actually uh, in the catalog. And of course, the Edify Academy to cover the basics of Eddy Current Array. Any question? <laughs> No question. Uh, you're welcome to come later on. So as I said, we have the ready, the spine, the shark. I have different probes also. I didn't speak about that, but we have a, a new generation of probe, which is called P-Flex, so printed flexible probe, ultra flexible. Uh, that can be also interesting for some application. <laughs>